Hey everybody, it's Ad the Red, and welcome back to Battle Girls. Right then, last of left off, we had ourselves a nice little moment with um, Sheehan. I, I, I didn't almost just forget her name. No, no, no. Mm. Oh, hey, yes, yeah, so, looks like that's, uh, I think, paying off, I hope. So, uh, anyway, uh, we're nearly there. It's the home stretch, apparently, which is a bit disconcerting, but okay. Uh, make it to this in the Battle Royale, my, uh, my country will... Oh. I'll make it through this and the Battle Royale, my country will prosper. Okay. Well, that's... Two more battles and the country shall prosper. Mm -hmm. All right. You reach out, but there's nothing except empty space beside you in the bed. <laughs> uh, she left, motherfucker. Uh, kind of disappointing. Well, yeah, but you should have expected that. You open your eyes. Everything is neat and clean. Peaceful, even. A quick test of your limbs tells the tale of a tough week. You're sore and tired. You stir brewing some tea and then have yourself a hot shower. That's just screen shook. When you step out of the bathroom, towel around your waist, you're hitting the face of the water clothes. Alarms go off in your head and you reach for anything you can use as a weapon before you hear a giggle. Oh, a well, fucking course it is. Good morning, Taki. You might have changed first. Uh, please don't kill me. I know that I had a moment with Sheehan and that, no, not you, uh, but uh, don't, 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 don't murder me, please. You tug clothing off of your face, feeling heat creep up, uh, creep up your cheeks. Oh, it's all three of them. Hello. Um. Okay. What's going on? Everyone's gathered in your room again, drinking tea and coffee. I, I made that tea for myself, you fuck. Oh, what the hell, whatever. Using the door to the bathroom as cover, you quickly pull on your clothes. They're very clean smelling, too. Okay. D d is that strange? Do you not wash your clothes, motherfucker? Everything's in order, it seems. And my underwear's here. The zipper's still on, right? I don't know. It was nice of you to prepare the water for us, Kiro. I didn't do it for you! If you could if you could all stop giving me a heart attack, though, that would be wonderful. Yeah. As soon as you figure out how to stop Kiko from picking your locks. I don't think I want to, actually. I kind of think I prefer the surprise. It's not just that I like the thought of her being able to get in my room or something like this. <laughs> you sign defeat, sitting at the table and claiming an unattended cup of tea. How are you feeling? Uh, like I've been hit with many hammers. Many hammers. Honestly, not fantastic. It's all starting to feel a little unreal. I'm tired and my body's worn out. <laughs> oh, boo-hoo. The girls look between each other for a moment before turning to face you. Okay, what was that conspiratorial bullshit? No class today, then. Let's just relax here, have tea, have food, and be social. Sound fair? Skipping class. All for it. Thumbs up. A-okay. You fidget a little at the prospect of not doing anything, but they all appear earnest. <laughs> okay, I, I can actually kind of, um... Well, I don't know if it would count kind of as being doing nothing in the fact that you're actually being social. That's sort of something. It keeps your mind occupied as long as there's conversation and uh, the potentially other things to keep your mind going. Well, mind busy, but... Um, yeah, doing absolutely nothing, though, that's, that's, yeah, that's fucking bullshit. It, it kind of... I go insane if I don't have something to occupy my brain. Um, yeah, anyway. You sigh and take a sip from your cup. Okay, okay. Just relaxation today. You all sit around the table talking about nothing and about what you did before coming here. Talking about nothing and... Nothing and well, that's that's not exactly. Oh, never mind. But nothing and about what you did before coming here. At some point, though, a dark musing warms its way into into the piece. Uh, do we know anything about the fifth suit? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, no, but calling it that almost makes it sound more ominous than it would normally. The fifth suit. Mike and Akika look uncomfortable, and Sheen looks angry. What? They seem to let Micah take the lead on the conversation. Well, first, they made it to the fifth battle, which means they've not been too damaged to their country to be unable to afford. That sounds like a real threat to us. Aren't we the only ones to port our parasols fully? Of course, it's always, it's always that bullshit. It's always the underdog, poor country, or whatever. Or the poor school, or whatever. Whatever the group is that manages the main character's team. Frankly, you're right. Our economy is not great. We're actually in debt, and everything's riding on you. Oh. Okay. Thanks. The pressure. I don't feel it at all. It's There's no weight on my shoulders whatsoever. I'm not going to have a panic attack and pass out. Ow. Sheehan thumps Mike on the arm. Thank you. 
Really? That kind of pressure weren't the last stretch. Uh huh. Yes, she understands. I don't know how you don't, Mister Miss Miss Mister Miss Tactical. I, but I, yeah, never mind. Right. Sorry. Anyway, yes, it's a threat to us. But I know for a fact that some of our previous opponents are. She pauses, looking for the right word. <laughs> Struggling. The loss against us isn't the only one they've had. But apparently these guys haven't lost a fight, and even worse than that, oh, and even worse than that, Sheen's frown returns with full intensity. They've killed someone. <laughs> a fucking course they have. A, a kitchen. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> Wait, what? You nearly spill your drink in surprise. Micah slowly nods. Well, that's supposedly the case. Su su supposedly, I'm sorry. I think if there was a death, that'd be a little more um, than a rumor. Uh, if, if this isn't a 100% confirmed thing, you shouldn't just go around spewing gossip. Unless this is the kind of thing where they would actually want to brush that under the rug. In which case, I could understand it being kind of a... Well, we've heard some things, but it's not exactly clear. No one's really coming out and being honest about this entirely. But anyway, you know, cover-ups and all. Well, that's supposing the case. After losing them, the co-pilot had to be hospitalized. They didn't make it. Oh, never mind. Um, well, okay, that does sound like it's their fault then, even if it's, you know, after the fact. A chill descends in the room, and you feel awkward for bringing it up. Listen, no matter what happens, I swear that you'll all be okay. That's not a promise you can make. I mean, you can make it, but there's no guarantee you can keep it. What you should say is, I will try my best not to fuck up and get any of you killed. Or yourself, I suppose. Uh, I'd rather put myself at risk than any of you. Well, you're out there too, but you are in the more quote unquote defensive, defensive position. They all smile at you brightly, nodding, and the inside they're weeping because they're terrified that you're gonna screw up. Because it's you, and I'm the one piloting your brain. Let's not keep talking about that for now. Cheer up. You first. There's still plenty of hours to go before the next fight. You suspect that the less moving your body does, the better. Sure thing. Well, <laughs> giving your body time to recuperate, sure, but I think you'd want to limber up a little. Oh, well, hmm. This isn't exactly the most in physically demanding in terms of what you actually have to do. So I suppose since his big thing is to keep his mind free, eh, I guess physical leth lethargy would actually assist here. I'll grab some more snacks. You do that. And then it just... Okay. Is she a snack? I mean, I'll... I'll yeah, yeah I, just, I won't turn it down. Why did my brain go there immediately? Welcome back. Good to see you're all intact. You're looking at least slightly more refreshed. She and yawns loudly to punctuate the point. Anyway, I just want to wish you all luck. I mean it. Karika looks at you pointedly. They're scary. Their pilot is nearly as highly rated as you are. Nearly, but not quite. I am still better. Nearly isn't good enough, though. <laughs> the extra year he's had to practice compared to Tar uh, to Kiro, however, is. Yeah, that's, there's that, too. You all look between each other, and Kariko shrugs. I have faith in you. Work in sync, don't get beaten, and we'll all see you all later. Yeah, sure. Akiko grins widely, and the three girls all turn to face you. Decision time again, Taki? Yeah, here we go. This is serious. I need to take a co-pilot I can trust more than anything. But I've already taken Sheehan, and I can't take her in more than twice. I mean, it, it's giving me the option, apparently, but I shouldn't do it. I'm not supposed to. I don't want to place excess burden on her that might impede our performance. Hmm. So, I'm going to do what I was originally planning on doing and take Akiko instead. Let's go in, balls to the wall, bullshit, crazy random. This one's going to be seriously dangerous, Akiko. Oh, Akiko, will you help me? I've always treated these fights as dangerous, silly. Stop looking at me like I'm porcelain. With a figure like that, I can't. Her, on the other hand, looks like a swift breeze might snap her shoulder, her, her elbows, kind of. Oh, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's the joint I was looking for. Never mind. That's true. You're tough as nails and pillowy. Let's kick some butt, then. One, uh, for once, you weren't walking out into a freshly repaired, pristine arena. <laughs> wow. They really need, to, really need to invest in a maid service. It looks the same to me. Oil stains patch the gritty ground, supports are cracked, and the craters, uh, craters dot the ground. 
I think the northern suit invested in getting some scarier shells. That's good to know. Yikes. Your banter is cut short by the other side of the arena opening up. Okay. What is this? That's a familiar sight. You aren't wrong. They do look impressive. Their stance is almost a mirror to your own. We can do this, though. We're better than them. Thank you for the vote of confidence, Akiko. Hehe. <laughs> the familiar column of lights begins its crawling descent from the center of the ceiling's, uh, uh, the ceiling's arena. The arena's ceiling. You tighten your grip on and test your limbs where the klaxon cuts into the air. Okay, I don't even know what the suit is. It's not even sh I, I, guess, I guess it's a similar, so is it a similar model or something? Uh... I don't... Huh. Hmm. Okay. This sounds like Shein. It's a balls of the wall. Just going, you know, melee style. But gunfight and hit and run? No, no, no. Either one of those sounds like it could be Maika or... It... Although, then again, okay, actually, let me do it this way. Micah, we have, with Micah, we practice with firearms. So we specifically practice guns. And hit and run would rely more on dodging and maneuvering, which seems to be Akiko's thing with the whole dancing. So I'm going to go with that, and I think, I guess that's her. All right, Akiko, we'll hit and run them. We don't want to leave any openings. Hi, Itaki. Oh, it's that. They are basic clan of us, aren't they? You even got the samurai pauldron things. Right, um, although I don't remember if we have the giant fucking, um, <laughs> magazine here. The, 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 the drum, the, the drum, that's what I was looking for. You head towards them carefully to start with, waiting for them to make a move. They track you with your gun, being just as patient. Oh, that's, that's, that's good to know. They're actually smart. You let loose a few rounds, and the moment they bring their shield up to block, you dash in, jabbing at their side. They're quick! They hop aside, their shield turning your blade away, though they're too far back to retaliate. Quick, uh, quicker, Taki! Yeah, you, that's helpful, thank you. You swap your grip, shoot at their head, and swap again. This time, you open fire on their knee. You don't watch to see the damage you dealt, skipping aside from their next slice. Oof, close one! They sprint at you, swinging their shield at your head. Oh, come on. You duck and put your shield up, blocking the blade that follows only moments after. Well, at least you're being responsive here, that's good. You still have to brace yourself against the sheer force of it, skidding through the dirt as you fight for traction. Tch. Let's keep going. Wrestle, trip, focus, fire. Okay, this is definitely Sheehan. I'm going to assume this is still uh, Micah. And guess this is uh, Akiko. Let's just see if I'm right. Let's hope. Trip. Can you think of any way we could trip them up? Well, they have legs, so get something under them and pull the leg out. And then they go to the ground and have an owie. Hmm. Yep. <laughs> Good. I brusque, but that's what we need right now. We're in a heated situation. So I'll make it obvious. They'll give us an opening. All right. You've got faith in Akiko's ability to be crafty. You see, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's an understatement. So you dash at them, aiming to bring your blade down in their head. They bring their shield up and you, uh, you're up and clang off, clangs off, clank, clank, clang off. God damn it. You hop back from the retaliating strike, stepping in into the right. Almost there. You duck from the next attack and step in even further, blade low and threatening them with a shield slam. Now! You hook your weapon behind their legs and slam forward. They try to move it back, but tumble over with a crash. Yes! You manage a decent stab at their waist, forcing oil to spurt out before springing back. Good job, Taki. And you too, but let's not get cocky yet. <laughs> no, not for tonight. Let's take them out. Okay, breaking them open, that... That sounds way too forceful. That, that sounds like straight up she and just go in, barreling with the fist and sl just tearing their armor apart. Disarming them sounds more tactical, so I'm gonna guess disabling their legs, which they're down anyway. Prevent them from getting up and already down. You know, th that, that's a plausible strategy, and that sounds to be more a little bit more along the lines of what we got with Kiko right now, so I'll disable the legs. Okay, let's disable their legs. They won't be able to keep up with us that way. <laughs> Good in theory, but don't you think they'll be ready for it? 
I hope not. Uh, that's a good point, actually. You ready yourself, weapon it in a position to guard and strafing slowly towards them. They don't give you a chance to approach, rocketing at you the moment they're steadied. Oh crap. Your blades clash and kick up sparks, and for a moment you push them back. It takes just a second to reverse your grip, and you, and you try to slam your bl uh, blade into the leg. No Taki! They pull their leg back, and your, your attack uh, slides down, merely scratching the ar uh, armor. Blech. Ah! They drive their own blade into your leg, severing your joints, causing all the spurt and machinery to grind. Ah, no! You push them away, and they step back, and they back up, dealing even more damage as their weapon is pulled out. Come on, move! It's no good. Well, I, I don't want to give up yet. Ah, shit. You try to move, but nothing responds. You can tell that Akiko's hurting. Come on, you hunk of junk. You throw a, uh, around your will with every ounce of your being and manage to get into some semblance of ready stance. Your joints grind and crunch, spurting oil and lubricant. Ugh. Are you even able to do anything? No. The enemy stalks towards you and a cold feeling sinks into your stomach. A fist slams into your suit and you can feel yourself black out. Akiko's voice a dull ache in the back of your head. Well, shit. Ouch. The metal of the repair scaffold feels cold against your back, and your body feels tired. Any injured co-pilots need to immediately go off to first aid, so you send them all away at once. Though you don't expect to win every battle, the loss still hurts. But doesn't this put us out of the running? You look up at your suit. Chunks have been torn from the limbs, and oil is leaking from various small gouges. Your view is obstructed by a familiar silhouette. Planning to sit the room up, Takiro? Or perhaps you'd like to l uh, lend a hand and make yourself useful. Uh, lend a hand at fixing a suit? I'm not sure that I'm qualified for that. At best, I can work on a car. You can fix a car? That's better than I expected of you, honestly. Oh! Ah. Yep. Grab that welder over there and get some scrap metal. Sure, I guess. Shouldn't this be all too professional, though? Kariko blinks and looks over her shoulder. Look around the hangar, genius. You do indeed look around. I don't know what I'm looking for, if I'm honest. That's the point. There's no one else there. It's just you and her. She's the expert. She's your repair... Uh, your, your, your fucking repair crew. What you're looking for are these so-called professionals. I'm the only one here, and yes, I'm really damn good at my job. But it'd be a lot faster if I had someone doing the grunt work while I fiddle with the complicated shit. And if you help fix things up, maybe there'll be better odds of your suit not falling apart in the next battle. You look between Kariko and the suit. With a reluctant groan, you lift yourself up before gathering the tools. Kariko pauses, looking, looking up and down. You're not too hurt to actually do this, are you? I won't force you. No, I'll be fine. Better than sitting around feeling sorry for myself, after all. Her accusatory expression settles into something that's at least slightly softer. For a moment, anyway. And anyway, with that, I'm going to end the episode here. It's gone on a slightly longer than I uh, initially planned on. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you next time.